Mesdames et messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, la session générale de 2018, since last year's general session, we have had, we have uh, 182 member countries. I'd like to welcome them all, although some of them couldn't make the trip this year. And I'd particularly would like to welcome the new delegates who are attending for the first time. Mr. President, distinguished members of the council, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, 2018 can be summed up as follows, 29 new or revised chapters to the terrestrial code and 20 new or revised chapters to the aquatic animal health code, also many uh, revisions in the manuals. There were also 28 working groups that examined such diverse subjects as pig well-being, uh, the training of veterinary paraprofessionals, animal trypanosomiasis, the transport of biological products, 2018, also saw 11 new establishments recognized as OA reference laboratories, and which we welcome to our scientific network. Also, 2,000 immediate notifications uh, and uh, follow-up reports in addition to the semestrial and annual reports. 23 countries benefited from PBS missions, 14 training workshops for national focal points, 25 dossiers examined for initial recognition of an official status, not to mention the nearly 350 uh, annual uh, reconfirmation files, 119 projects managed by the uh, World Fund, 31 of which were signed last year, and also two regional conferences for, for, for Europe and the Americas, in Georgia and in the Dominican Republic, respectively, and uh, two world conferences on important subjects, but also the conference on PPR held in Belgium that the, uh, the French Agriculture Ministry referred to, in, and the conference on antimicrobial resistance in Morocco held last October. 2018 was also the year that saw the op operational launching of two uh, uh, projects that are important to the OAE, the renovation of our WAHE system and the creation of the observatory for the implementation of OAE standards. At, this, uh, at the same time as we renovated our um, IT system thanks to the master plan that we established last year. So once again, 2018 has been a very active year. The presentation of this annual report is an opportunity for me to thank all of those who contributed to achieving those results, that is, the members of the specialist commissions and the ad hoc groups, uh, the experts from the uh, network of reference centers and the PVS experts, the host countries of our regional and sub-regional representations, the member countries that second uh, staff to us or those who um, uh, host our conferences and workshops, also the donors and our partners who assist us to um, in, in improving our activities, as well as all of the OIE staff. I, I can't uh, thank each one individually, but uh, you should know that uh, I am well aware of all the support that you provide, and we're very grateful for all your support and your contributions. Unfortunately, one hour isn't enough for me to exhaustively list all of our activities last year. So let me ask you to refer to the document that we sent you a few weeks ago, as well as to the summary table appended there, too, which at a glance uh, allows you to follow the implementation of our program of activities since 2016. But today, whereas the council has already, be began to, already begun to work on the preparation of the seventh strategic plan that will be submitted to you for your consideration and approval at the next general session, I felt it uh, preferable to take this opportunity to uh, brief you on the progress made in implementing the current strategic plan, the sixth, since 2016, with a particular attention to certain key moments of the past year in order to highlight the first tangible results in terms of effectiveness, credibility, and visibility of our organization. My objective is therefore 
today uh, to make a presentation that should constitute a contribution to your reflection over the UAE's future. By way of conclusion of this uh, preambular part of my speech, I would like to remind you of just how important it is just to have a strategic plan. This is a pivotal document which you, member states, partners, can refer to as it contains the targets we should be striving to reach through our activities and the expectations we are to meet. It is the overarching framework for the entire OIE community. In my personal capacity as a Director General, it's a roadmap, a roadmap which you've tasked me with implementing. It's the yardstick by which you will be uh, judging how well of a job I did when my turn comes to a close. Currently, I will be talking about uh, how the main technical and administrative achievements uh, under the sixth strategic plan are important. After all, they've allowed the OIE to gaze at the future with confidence because uh, currently we're set to, to adopt a very ambitious seventh strategic plan. Next, in the second part of my presentation, I will share a few ideas about the political dimension of our work. So just to jog your memory, I would like to remind you of the three pillars of the current strategic plan. First of all, ensuring animal health and well-being. Second, building trust by strengthening transparency and communication. And third, reinforcing the capacity and sustainability of veterinary services. Of course, these areas uh, are not new for the OIE. Nonetheless, I would like to take a different approach, have a different modus operandi, a different way of uh, carrying out these activities. Thus, over the last year, we've done a great deal of work with a view to better pinpointing the strategies we adopt, also broadening the scope of our toolkit. I'm, of course, referring to the overhaul of the WAHI system and the establishment of the observatory, and also OAE internal governance overhaul. I will now provide the rationale for these points, clear policy, tailored tools, and appropriate governance. I will now switch to English. A better identification of strategies thanks to high-level reflection on policies and programs. And let me uh, give you some examples to illustrate uh, this point. Let us begin with uh, the definition of structured action plans for the operational application of disease control strategies for rabies, foot and mouth disease, pest deputyruminant, and all these uh, strategies have been uh, submitted to uh, your consideration and approbation at uh, various uh, uh, events uh, and conferences organized uh, in Abidjan, in, uh, also uh, in Thailand, and uh, for rabies in Geneva. And for these three diseases, identified as priorities, global strategies have been validated jointly with FAO and for rabies also with WHO. In each case, action programs were subsequently developed and specific governance put in place to ensure the best possible operational application of the strategy and to organize the support to be given to the member countries concerned. And of course, these documents can also be used in advocacy approaches to potential investors. Numerous workshops, as uh, shown on this slide, were thus organized throughout the year in coordination with FAO and the relevant uh, economic communities. African swine fever, uh, which is a subject of our um, technical item two, is now on our agenda and proposal for action will be submitted for your approval. So therefore, I will not further um, uh, address you on, on this topic now. On all these topics, collaboration with our partners and especially with FAO is really vital for the success of actions to control animal disease, in particular through the joint platform called GFTAD for Global Framework for Progressive Control of Transboundary Animal Disease. 
And this platform is really important for us to combine uh, our strengths. In 2018, with FAO, we launched the third external evaluation of the GFSTAD, and the conclusions highlight that a platform of this kind is still relevant, and probably more than ever, given the numerous challenges relating to animal disease that we must tackle together. However, the evaluation also revealed weakness in terms of the governance of GFTADs, um, and this weakness is strongly linked to the inadequate allocation of human and financial resources. So, given that we have well-defined strategies and action plans, as well a well-constructed uh, cooperation platform with committed partners, it was no longer acceptable not to be equal to the task when member countries are in need of our support. I have therefore decided that the OIE will allocate additional specific resources to GFTAD and that the regional committees will again be held with the secretariats managed by the OIE regional representations. By its very na nature, we have to recall that the OIE is the organization responsible for animal health. Therefore, we must maintain our position on those subjects that form our core activity. <coughs> Control of rabies, foot and mouth disease, pest dipeturminant, is essentially based on large-scale vaccination campaigns. So, thanks to the financial support of several donors, the OIE is continuing to support member countries by giving them access to vaccine banks, which uh, function in accordance with the principle described in the strategic document published last October 2018. Today, we can uh, therefore say that the OIE has a clear, publicly shared policy on managing um, its vaccine banks. I should remind you that this strategic document was drafted after we had obtained the views and suggestions uh, of the partners during a think tank, uh, which I told you, um, I do believe, uh, last year. During uh, 2018, we were able to supply, therefore, around uh, 34 million doses of vaccine. But for other many diseases, recourse to chemical medicines is crucially important, be they antibiotics or antiparasitics. And consequently, commitment to prudent and controlled use of veterinary medicines is another important aspect of our work. On this issue, we have also worked closely with FAO and WHO to define a coordinated uh, strategy on IMR. On several occasions, we have had an opportunity to give you a progress report on the work carried out, and this evening we shall, uh, return, uh, we shall be returning to, the, to this subject uh, with the presentation of uh, the conclusions and outcomes of the Global Conference held last October in Marrakech, um, in Morocco. This conference, from a point of view, was particularly successful both at political level, thanks to a strong ministerial uh, participation, and also at a scientific level, with uh, numerous uh, uh, highly informative presentations by experts. The discussions and conclusions of this conference are particularly useful to help us prepare the activities for the months and years uh, ahead. In particular, that is very important to contribute more effectively to the deployment of your national action plans. Furthermore, our colleagues at uh, regional and sub-regional level have made a significant contribution in disseminating uh, information on standards and good practices, in each case promoting the One Health concept as well as the tripartite approach. And once again, on this slide, you can uh, uh, see all uh, the meetings, workshops, events organized by our colleagues uh, at regional level. And in addition to these workshops, the distribution of communication tools translate in a, to several local languages also helped to raise the awareness of the authorities as well of the partners and relevant professionals. But don't worry, I uh, 
shall not be looking in detail at uh, the very important uh, work carried out uh, in support uh, of uh, also the UN um, uh, working group on uh, IMR, as uh, Dr. Stone later uh, today uh, will be speaking to you uh, on this subject. So therefore, be patient until uh, uh, tonight. However, as I already wanted to make sure that the OIE was better prepared, I would like to inform you about my decision uh, made last year to set up a dedicated and specifically identified team at the OIE headquarters with colleagues uh, as uh, contact points in region and uh, sub-regional representation. Also, uh, last February this year, I put forward a proposal to the Council for the other group on uh, IMR that was uh, existed for um, uh, several number of, of years to be converted to a fully pledged, a fledged sorry, uh, working group. And your assembly will be uh, called upon to decide on, on this matter this evening when you are um, presented with the terms of preference and the composition of the proposed uh, working group on which the Council uh, has already given a favorable uh, opinion. But ladies and gentlemen, at this point of my presentation, I will not like to give the impression the OIE is only concerned with terrestrial animals. On a number um, of occasions, some of you have rightly reminded me uh, of the importance of the aquatic animal sector. I have heard your request, and we are endeavoring to respond appropriately in accordance, of course, and sometimes unfortunately, with the means at our disposal. I should like to thank, therefore, the countries that have been supporting us in this respect, either by allocating financial report, uh, resources or by seconding uh, colleagues to join our teams. Thus, uh, we strengthened uh, the team at headquarters with a new colleague in charge of matters relating to IMR uh, in the aquaculture sector and uh, also uh, within our representation uh, in Nairobi and Gaborone, uh, we had the pleasure to welcome uh, a new colleague uh, also for such activities. In the aquaculture sector, the OIE is currently involved in several initiatives, and in particular, the initiative launched at the beginning of last year by FAO and the World Bank, with the support of partners such as uh, the Norwegian Agency for Development Cooperation, NORAD. This is initiative uh, seeks, uh, to, seeks to develop a progressive management pathway to improve aquaculture biosecurity. And in January this year, I'm very pleased because the OIE hosted the second meeting of this group, and I am confident that uh, the work uh, um, will lead to very useful uh, tools given that the sustainable uh, development of aquaculture uh, production system requires uh, the integration of uh, such notions on biosecurity. Lastly, but uh, not the last, and uh, President uh, Ernst is uh, just in front of me, so therefore I have to, to also highlight uh, the recently organized global conference on aquatic animal health held uh, uh, last April with uh, so warm hospitality of uh, Chile. And uh, this conference also helped us to identify new avenues uh, for work. And I know that I can count on uh, all the members of uh, the Aquatic uh, Commission uh, to help us uh, to monitor the implementation of the recommendations uh, uh, that we present to you uh, next uh, Wednesday, and also to help us uh, um, to uh, put together a multi-year uh, action program, because uh, that is important now that we could have a clear and, and well-developed uh, 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 program on uh, aqua uh, aquatic animals and animal health. Animal health, but uh, one cannot talk about animal health without mentioning our activities in the field of animal welfare. All these activities are conducted within the framework of the strategy you have uh, uh, adopted uh, in Mexico during the global conference uh, held in 2016, and you have confirmed your uh, support uh, in, uh, at the General Assembly held in 2017. Since then, work has continued, especially at regional level. Let me highlight the training modules uh, 
which have been organized in the Middle East region in close collaboration with our team uh, from Brussels. A new cycle of training for focal points uh, was launched also in Africa uh, in October 2018, uh, notably targeting uh, the welfare of uh, working equids. And uh, we have also, uh, I hope so, significantly contributed to the efforts of the African Union IBA to develop a continental strategy. In uh, Asia, the advisory group uh, of the regional platform has published a newsletter with detail on the action um, undertaken. And in Europe, uh, the platform has been also very active and several workshops have been organized, uh, particularly on animal welfare during long distance transport, management of stray dog uh, population, and welfare issues in uh, natural disasters. This kind of action for me are very concrete, pragmatic, and we will continue uh, to develop them uh, at regional level. Now, regarding the work uh, on biological risk reduction, developed in line with the orientation you have validated uh, at the Global Conference held in Ottawa uh, earlier in 2017, I should like uh, to draw your attention on the publication of several uh, documents, as you can see also on this slide. First, the guidelines for investigation of suspicious biological events, and this document has been available on our website since uh, March uh, last year. Also, the report of the workshop uh, on bridging epidemiology and forensics, which was held in March 2018. And finally, lastly, the third document entitled Guidelines for Identification, Assessment, and Management of Dual Use in the Context of responsible research. This document has been published in January this year, 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, this short review of the activities being undertaken to improve animal health and animal welfare highlights the wide range of fields in which the veterinary service uh, operates. This only strengthens the OIE commitment to improving sanitary governance which require a strengthening of capacity and quality of the veterinary services. I am not going to say more about the scale of the work done in 2017 and 2018 on this matter, as I already talked a lot uh, about that last year, and last year also during the previous uh, general session, uh, my colleague uh, provided you a lot of information and detail in the kiosk uh, organized uh, margin of the plenary session. But let me say that the work goes on. The seventh version of the PVS tool has been finalized. The different components of the PVS uh, pathway are developed um, as the different missions uh, unfold. Collaboration with partners such as WHO, uh, African Union IBAR, CVP, or ORSA continues to be fruitful. But in this domain activities related to the PVS, I would like to highlight another major program, uh, namely the program of training for veterinary paraprofessionals. You will have a chance to obtain more detailed information from my colleagues who will be at your disposal on the stand available throughout uh, the week, uh, just outside of, of this room. And, uh, I'm really proud on, on this stage um, to um, highlight the work accomplished by uh, uh, the working group because uh, that was a very active working group and I hope that you will appreciate uh, uh, the guidelines that are, are not uh, published. And for me, we have not only guidelines uh, developed by very uh, uh, good experts, but um, I do believe and I hope that uh, these guidelines will also uh, provide and support boys and girls to have more professional opportunities and therefore to contribute and better contribute to the socioeconomic development of their countries. So our thanks uh, go to the partners um, for their belief in this project that was perhaps not obvious uh, uh, at the beginning and for giving us the necessary financial support 
for its operational implementation. However, let me state in the strongest terms that the OIE is in no way forgetting the veterinary profession, as some people, unfortunately, would seem to fear. The OIE has for many years been committed to strengthening the capacity of the veterinary services. It was therefore relevant, that is really my belief, as a complement to the guidelines developed several years ago on the training of veterinarians, as a complement to the training program for veterinary education establishment, as well as a complement to the many seminars organized for veterinarian focal points. Yes, from my point of view, it was about time that we also took an interest in the quality of training given to veterinary professional. We have also a significant role to play in the activities of the veterinary services, whether in the field, on the field, or laboratory. Furthermore, the need for good quality training of veterinarians and paraprofessionals was also organized by the World Veterinary Association in its position statement, published at the end of its council meeting last November. So, lastly, to conclude this uh, chapter, I shall mention the work done on public-private partnerships in recent uh, months. The quality of relations between the two sectors, public and private sector, is a subject often emphasized uh, in the PVS missions report as a factor that can help to improve the efficacy of veterinary services. This explains why the OIE has focused attention on this issue, and a considerable amount of work has been done with the help of experts based on the information you provide, you, uh, you provide us sorry, with, um, through the questionnaire we sent you uh, a few months ago. And today, I am very pleased to be able to report on one on what has already been done, um, namely the publication of a report on the global typology of PPPs in the veterinary domain, a publication of OIE guidelines for both public and, and, and private audience uh, with a view to the development of an effective and sustainable partnership, also the organization of uh, online courses prior to the distribution of uh, this handbook and uh, three workshops are also uh, uh, and still on our agenda for the coming months um, in Africa and Asia. And finally, uh, we are uh, uh, in preparation of uh, an OIE panorama, which should be published uh, by the end of, of the year. And once again, for this topic, uh, we have also colleagues who are uh, ready to provide you with more information, and therefore, please don't hesitate to visit them uh, you, will have, uh, you, you will be welcome uh, for more information uh, from today until Wednesday. C'était la première partie. That brings the first part of my presentation, which covered technical activities, to a close. Let me now move on to the second part of my presentation, in which I will talk about the tools which we're currently overhauling in order to support our policies. I think the picture I've just painted clearly shows that we've improved the strategy setting that we do. In parallel, we've also begun an overhaul of our tools, the tools of our disposal, which are absolutely vital in order for us to be able to implement our strategy. Strategies. And this is what uh, the second portion of my presentation will cover. To begin with, I'd like to say a few words about the WAHAS overhaul. Ladies and gentlemen, last year I told you that in order to ensure effective animal health protection, we needed epidemiological data that was robust and validated, as well as widely disseminated. It is for that reason that starting in 2016, I decided to overhaul WAHAS. This is a major challenge, a pressing challenge for the OIE. Therefore, we need uh, substantial financial efforts to underpin that overhaul. So thank you to each and every one of you who has supported us, especially those who've offered their support from day one. We've got the ball rolling. Of course, the uh, short-term objective is to improve this IT tool. 
However, our investment should also help improve the service, incorporating information that's not, strictly speaking, veterinary. For instance, socioeconomic and climate data, and in fact, uh, we'll discuss this a little later on during the panel session with international organizations. This is necessary, this data is necessary in order to get a better grasp of the events at play in light of other factors affecting animal health developments. WAHIS needs to be interconnected with other systems. This is part and parcel of the project because we want to be part of a network, we want to share information. All of these various components of the WAHIS project can also be combined with other projects. Let me give you one example. The database, which we've uh, set up in order to collate PVS mission findings, but there's also the database on antimicrobial resistance as well as uh, others. These uh, should all be seen as strength, buttressing our position. We are, after all, one of the major global managers of animal health information. Unfortunately, as is often the case with uh, large-scale IT projects, we ran into some unexpected stumbling blocks as we sought to translate the technical specifications of the project into uh, concrete results. Thus, we're behind schedule when it comes to several WAHAS milestones, for instance, uh, immediate notifications, the semester-by-semester -semester reports, all of this uh, is scheduled to be launched in 2020 now. And uh, by the way, just outside the auditorium, there is a kiosk which uh, you can go and see to get additional information. The second major project is uh, the observatory, which we are establishing. Now, you recognized that this is a worthwhile endeavor back in May of last year, during the last general session, by adopting a resolution on the topic. And I'm delighted to note that uh, this initiative won the support of G20 agricultural ministers who met in July of last year in Buenos Aires. Furthermore, our report got a mention in the ministerial declaration. Once again, to jog your memory, or perhaps there are new delegates in the room who do not know much about this project, I wanted to remind you that the goal of the observatory is not for it to monitor compliance of national legislation with OIE standards. Our objective is not to pinpoint who's at the top of the class, who's at the bottom of the class. No. The point is to gather information about the situation on the ground so that we can continue improving the quality of our standards. In addition, we also will use this information to improve the training programs, the capacity building programs we run. We've made much headway designing the project, which is, it must be said, very complex. Last year, when we, preparing, when we were preparing the technical theme, we sent out a questionnaire. 145 countries responded, said the first thing. Secondly, we also signed a partnership with the OECD back in June of last year, and the OECD will be helping us work on the methodology. Now, this uh, cooperation we've undertaken with the OECD is very important because it will help us answer some very difficult questions, sketching out the contours of the project. It will help us answer questions such as, how do we best describe OAE standards and their implementation? Because Various countries uh, view the standards in a different fashion, they implement them in different ways. So also what kind of information should we be gathering? How do we organize this information gathering process? The OECD will be helping us answer these questions and others through the study. And in fact, we hope to get the final report in a few months' time, publishing it before the year is out. In the meantime, 
there is already a web page which is constantly being updated. There you can uh, read about the latest developments. And in fact, uh, this week we had a meeting dedicated. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled dedicated to this topic during during the lunch break tomorrow. There will be a meeting on this topic, so please do come along. Furthermore, I also wanted to flag up the fact that this partnership with the OECD has offered us the opportunity to work hand in hand with uh, another international organization. And in fact, this prompted the publication of this report. You can see it up on the slide, the cover page. <laughs> which uh, shows how it's important for the OAE to collaborate with other international organizations, to set up partnerships so that uh, it can it can better monitor and assess international standards in line with the practices of other organizations. Once again, this project will be completed next year. So our policy is increasingly clear-cut and our tools are becoming increasingly effective. Nonetheless, there's still the question, how can we work effectively how is this possible unless we reform the OAE's internal governance processes? This is what I will talk about now. I wanted to kickstart an internal reform in order to mod modernize our governance structures and especially to make it to these processes more transparent both within the organization and to the outside world. Let me give you a few examples. First of all, We've changed the way in which certain bodies work. For instance, the specialist commissions. In 2016 and 2017, and in the run-up to commission re-elections in 2018, we worked on setting up a joint commission secretariat to ensure that uh, the work between the commissions and their respective secretariats is well coordinated. And, as you probably noticed, all the ad hoc uh, group meetings are now put up on the website, You've got their terms of reference there, and the meeting dates. Moreover, we also welcomed uh, the new members of the specialist commissions, those elected in May 2018, by holding induction meetings. We had meetings with each of the presidents and uh, some of the existing, existing members, which follows on logically from the resolution you adopted back in 2015, the resolution on the performance and effectiveness of the specialized specialist commissions. We've also revised the working methods of some, um, some of our working methods, for instance, when it comes to considering official status recognition submissions, the standardized procedures for managing reference centers, reference laboratories. Now, I won't delve into the details, but uh, I think uh, you'll agree that we've covered myriad topics. OIE colleagues were encouraged to find new working methods, cross-cutting methods, inclusive methods. We covered topics such as performance management. We've decided, uh, and in fact we've already set up an internal audit committee, and we've done some risk mapping too. We've uh, sought to improve our communications toolkit. I think we have uh, we had an excellent example of that yesterday. We're going to continue throughout the week. Furthermore, we have improved our publications. We don't just have the bulletin. We also have OIE News, a monthly publication, which I hope is uh, hope, uh, makes for riveting reading as it gives additional coverage to regional work that's underway. Furthermore, we focused on internal processes at the OIE, the HR policy is uh, something we've crafted. We've made our information systems, our IT systems more secure, and we have a master plan that we're currently implementing.
J'espère que vous avez conscience Ladies que ça représente un travail important pour toutes les équipes de l'UE. That you'll agree that all of this work is of utmost importance for the OIE. On top of the day-to-day -day tasks that the staff do, on top of their ordinary regular activities, I want to thank thank the staff for all of their efforts, and I hope that you've already, you've already noticed some of the changes that are underway. Now, the next part of my speech will be rather brief. Aside from the technical and administrative achievements uh, I've just listed, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the political dimension of the work we've been doing. I believe that we've managed to make the OIE more credible our partners and our investors trust us. This trust is ever increasing. And last but not least, the OIE is becoming more visible, not only visible to policymakers, but also in circles of influence. This is what I'd like to focus on. First of all, credibility. I think without a doubt, we've reinforced our credibility. After all, all of our teams made an effort to consolidate the organization, making it more robust, more transparent. Now, I've just mentioned this uh, a few moments ago, so I won't uh, go into it in great detail. Rather, let me tell you about how we interact with the various governing bodies of the organization and with our partners. I hope that the president and members of the council will agree that the council has once again Je pense que le Conseil n'est plus une taken its rightful place within the OIE governance structure. The Council is no longer an idle observer, as it might have been in the past. The meeting agenda is uh, tabled together with the President on the basis of the outcomes of Council meetings. The Council debates these, it issues opinions, and these opinions do not fall on deaf ears. In addition, Together with uh, the elected members of uh, regional commission bureaus, the relationships have been strengthened, specifically thanks to the establishment of core regional groups. These uh, regional commission conferences, as well as the input from bureau members, all contributed to these uh, achievements, which we hope to build on further. I also wanted to tell you about the decision I took to set up an innovative governance system within the OIE, which uh, will end up in our work when we kickstart uh, large-scale projects, such as the overhaul of the WAHAS or the establishment of the observatory. The Council will be involved in some of these initiatives as uh, will uh, delegates. Now, by bringing you on board, I've set out to do two things. First of all, I want the final product, the final outcome, to match your needs. That's the first thing. Second, I also want to ensure that you take ownership of these projects. This means that we will hit the ground running once we start using these tools, as you would have been involved in the design process. Lastly, I'd like to mention the think tanks we've organized over the last few years. The first one, back in 2017, focused on the PBS, but I also wanted to flag up the brainstorming session we had on OIE vaccine banks or the consultations we had on public-private partnership guidelines, for instance. Last but not least, there was also the dialogue forum on animal welfare. So we've had myriad consultations and debates, which I hope have helped to create a culture of openness at the OIE where we listen. I hope this will allow the OIE take, to take pride of place in the international arena. The second uh, aspect of this policy dimension I want to mention 
que beaucoup d'entre vous pensent que la confiance placed in us by partners and investors. Par le soutien Now, financier I'm sure that most of you believe that uh, trust should spill over into financial support on the part of member states and partner organizations. And the statistics are very eloquent. I'll just mention two figures because we have the budget administrative session later on in the week. So in 2018, two countries reiterated their intention to allocate Category A extraordinary contributions to the OIE. In 2019, this figure will rise to four countries. As for the World Fund, I welcome the fact that the existing donors have decided to maintain their commitment, but also the OIE has clearly bolstered their appeal as we have attracted new donors, including some emerging countries. So thank you very much to all donors. Thanks to your support, we're doing more and we're doing it better. However, trust also translates into non-financial support, non-pecuniary relationships. Let me mention two examples of such partnerships. First of all, the OECD. I already mentioned this partnership earlier on in my presentation when I discussed the observatory. Nonetheless, I would like to say that we have uh, submitted a request to the OECD in order to get recognition as uh, ODA eligible. Furthermore, we are co cooperating closely with the International Fund for International Development and Ms. Stanford. The IFED representative spoke here yesterday. We have a cooperation program we're currently implementing, and we're also discussing the possibility of becoming an observer in IFED's governing bodies. And last but not least, I cannot but mention the cooperation underway with the FAO and the WHO as part of the tripartite approach. Last year, we told you that the new strategic guidance note was adopted back in 2017. We've now crafted an action plan. There are varying levels of detail in that plan, depending on the subject area. This technical cooperation, this tripartite cooperation, has now been uh, put on a, a stronger institutional footing when we signed a memorandum of understanding. And we've also introduced a regional dimension as we have colleagues organizing tripartite platforms at the regional level to improve coordination of our efforts, of our joint efforts. Lastly, this tripartite cooperation has also resulted in joint uh, financial tools. We're currently putting the finishing touches of, uh, on a multi-donor fund, and this is part of an agreement we've um, signed with the UN Development Program. All of these examples attest to the fact that I'm determined to progressively reassess and consolidate our partnerships policy in keeping with the sixth strategic plan. And I'm sure we will uh, discuss this issue again when we go on to draft the seventh strategic plan. Now, I've talked about credibility and trust. Let me tell you about uh, the third pillar, visibility. I want the OIE to be known in uh, political circles and circles of influence. Far be it from me to distort uh, the essence of the OIE's vocation, its calling, which is after all scientific and technical. Nonetheless, I am compelled to find the necessary political backing to ensure that we put our work on a sustainable footing. We want veterinary services to win the recognition it deserves within national and global health governance systems. This is why I'm delighted to present to you the efforts we've been making for a number of years now, in particular in 2017, efforts aimed at uh, establishing contacts with various partners. In 2018, we did uh, 
mais aussi le Forum ministériel de la Semaine verte qui se tient annuellement à Berlin. Le panel ministériel organisé par part of the Green Week, qui prend uh, place à Moscou. January. In Berlin, there's also the Golden Autumn, which takes place in Moscow every year, a little later on in the year, as well as participation, our participation in high-level panels at the regional level. For instance, the South African Development Community Ministerial, which I took part in back in June 2018, Soit reconnu We're doing dans les everything we can to ensure that OAE programs and activities win recognition uh, in ministerial uh, declarations, in uh, the conclusions drawn at these various meetings. And this is what happened in Japon, uh, January 2018 when the G20 ministers of agriculture met in Nagata in Japan. And in fact, the ministerial declaration explicitly underscored the importance of implementing OAE standards to combat transboundary animal diseases. I hope that all of these various documents are of use to you and that you use these documents to argue your case when seeking additional financing from your ministries. President, council members, ladies and gentlemen, the current strategic plan will run out one and a half years from now. Nonetheless, the organization has already shown that it can evolve, it can restructure and organize its work in an efficient manner as per the direction, the course you charted for us uh, in the strategic plan. I believe the OIE is now a better place to meet the expectations of member states, to make a more substantial contribution to meeting the objectives of our partners and the SDGs. The OIE is also a better place to make its voice heard in various political fora dealing with the global challenges. The OIE stands prepared Et si les mots -clés to do more, harnessing what we've already achieved. Now, the key words which have come out of this sixth strategic plan are credibility, vous à robust, à a robust organization, trust, visibility. I now invite you to think about what the key words will be in the next strategic plan, perhaps an influential, attractive, and inspiring OIE. That's my suggestion, but I do hope we will deliberate uh, uh, this issue further as we put the finishing touches on the seventh strategic plan. In the meantime, President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, I hope that you will approve the activity report, which I had the honor of presenting to you this morning on behalf of all OIE staff, I'd like to thank you for the trust you've placed in us. Thank you very much.